Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is lesson 8.1. We're looking at matrices and systems of equations. We've got four objectives for this video. We're going to write matrices and determine their order. We're going to perform elementary row operations on matrices. We're going to use matrices and Gaussian elimination to solve systems of linear equations. And last thing we're going to do is use matrices and Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve a system of linear equations. Just a little introductory stuff with our matrices. First thing we're talking about is the order of a matrix, and the order deals with how many rows and how many columns a matrix has. So if we've got an M number of rows and an N number of columns, then we would say our matrix has the order M by N. If that number M matches up with that number N, so the same number of rows and columns, then we would say that we're dealing with a square matrix or that the matrix has a square order of whatever that N value is. Now because we have these rows and columns, we can talk about specific entries in our matrix. So this A sub 2, 3 means that we're talking about the entry in the second row, third column. If we're looking at a square matrix, then the entries A1, 1 entry, so first row, first column, A2, 2 would be second row, second column, A3, 3, third row, third column, so on and so forth. Those things are called the main diagonal entries. And last stuff, if we've got a matrix that has only one row, we call it a row matrix. And if we have a matrix that has only one column, we call it a column matrix. So first thing we're looking at is figuring out the order of some different matrices. So looking at this first one, there's only one entry. So we've got one row going across and one column going up and down. So we would say this is a one by one matrix. In letter B here, we've got one row going across and we've got four columns going up and down. So this would be a one by four row matrix. For letter C, we've got two rows going across and two columns going up and down, so this is a two by two square matrix. And our last one, we've got three rows going across and two columns going up and down, so this is a three by two matrix. Now last chapter we did a lot with systems of equations. And what we're going to work on doing in this chapter is taking those systems of equations and rewriting them as matrices. So here we've got this system of three equations. There's actually two different matrices that we can set up based on the information that we're given. And the first thing we're going to look at is called a coefficient matrix. And what a coefficient matrix is, we just take all of the coefficients on our variables. So if we look at that top equation, we had a 1 in front of our x, a negative 4 in front of our y, and a 3 in front of our z. So that becomes the first row of our matrix. In our second equation, we had a negative 1 in front of the x, a 3 in front of the y, and a negative 1 in front of the z. Last one, we had a 2 in front of the x. We didn't have any y's, so we need to fill in a 0 placeholder, and our z's had negative 4 on it. The other type of matrix that we can set up is called an augmented matrix. So you'll notice that we have our coefficient matrix here on the left-hand side, but then we added on this extra column, which was our equals to information from all of our equations. So the top equation was equal to 5. Second equation was equal to negative 3. Third equation was equal to 6. So in this example, what we're going to do is take our system of equations and rewrite it as an augmented matrix. And then we're going to figure out its order. So if we look across the top row of our system, again, we're just going to start off by grabbing those coefficients. So in front of our x, we've got a 1. In front of our y, we've got a 3. There aren't any z's. We need to fill in our 0 placeholder. There's a negative 1 in front of our w. And we're going to write out our augmented matrix. So we're going to include that equals 2 information on the far right-hand side. So this top equation becomes the row in the matrix 1, 3, 0, negative 1, 9. Now our second row doesn't have any x's, so we fill in a 0 there. We've got a negative 1 in front of the y, a 4 in front of the z, a 2 in front of the w, and this is equal to negative 2. Third row, we've got 1, 0, negative 5, negative 6, 0. And last row, we've got 2, 4, negative 3, 0, 4. And I'm going to include some square brackets around this because this means that it is actually a matrix. Now the last thing we need to do is figure out its order. So first thing I'm looking at is the number of rows going across 
there are four of those things. And then we look at the number of columns, including this augmented column on the far right hand side. There are five columns, so this is a four by five augmented matrix. Now our whole goal with these matrices is to be able to take those systems of equations, rewrite them in terms of a matrix so that we can go through and solve it. And we're going to use things called elementary row operations to get our matrices in row echelon form. So just like a system of equations has row echelon form, a matrix also has a row echelon form. So those elementary row operations that we can perform, we can interchange two rows, we could multiply a row by a non-zero constant, and we could add a multiple of a row to another row to help us get this row echelon look to our matrix. Now, a matrix in row echelon form is very similar to a system of equations in row echelon form, but it has some slight differences. If we have a row that consists entirely of zeros, we want to move that all the way down to the bottom of our matrix. Each row that does not consist entirely of zeros, the first non-zero entry has to be a one. If we have two successive non-zero rows, the leading one in the higher row has to be further left than the leading one in the lower row. So it's going to have a stair-step look to it, just like our system of equations had that stair-step look to it, where we gradually got rid of variables. So in this example, we've got this system of equations, and I've already translated it into an augmented matrix. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this matrix and get it into row echelon form. So we're going to be building a brand new matrix based on this information that we have. Now for row echelon form, just like our system of equations, we need to have a leading one in that first spot. So if we look at this matrix right now, that top row is good. We've got a leading one in what would be considered the X position. So I'm just going to leave that top row as is. So 1, negative 2, 3, 9. Now just like we did with our system of equations, we want to get rid of the number that's in the X position. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work with this second row. So we've got negative 3, 1, 0, negative 4. We want to turn this first number, this x position number, into a 0. So in order to get rid of a negative 1, we're going to need a positive 1. Well, we've already got a row that has a positive 1 in it. It's that top row. So we can go 1, negative 2, 3, 9. And then when we add these two rows together, the negative 1 and the 1 make a 0. 3 and negative 2 gives us 1. Then we've got 3 and 5. So now we've got a 0 in that x position and a 1 in that y position. And that's what we need it to look like in our row echelon matrix. A 0 in the x position and a 1 in that y position. So I'm going to fill that in as the second row on our brand new matrix. Now our last row has to have a 0 in the x position, a 0 in the y position, and a 1 in the z position. So we've got a little bit of work to do with this one. So we've got 2, negative 5, 5, and 17. In order to get rid of this 2, we're going to need a negative 2. So I'm going to take this middle row on our matrix and multiply by 2. So then we get negative 2, 6, 0, negative 8. And if we add those two rows together, those 2's cancel out and we get a 0. Negative 5 and 6 is 1. And then we've got 5 and 9. Now we need to get rid of the number in the y position. So I'm going to use our brand new middle row. And we're going to multiply by negative 1 to get those 1's to cancel out. So we've got 0, negative 1, negative 3, negative 5. And if we add those rows together, we get 0, 0, 2, 4. Now we said we needed a 1 in the z position. So we can take this entire row and divide it by 2. So then we get 0, 0, 1, 2. And now that's what it needs to look like for our row echelon form. So we're going to go to our last row here and fill in 0, 0, 1, 2. Now this is a matrix in row echelon form. We've got these leading ones gradually moving in, so we have that stair-step pattern just like we did with our system of equations. In order to solve a matrix, we need to get it in something called reduced row echelon form. So very, very similar to row echelon form, but we need to take it a step further. We say that a matrix is in reduced row echelon form if every column that has a leading one in it has zeros 
in every position above and below that leading one. And we use a process called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So very similar to that Gaussian elimination stuff we were doing before. So this is what a matrix looks like in reduced row echelon form. Okay, in our top row we've got 1, 0, 0, middle row goes 0, 1, 0, bottom row goes 0, 0, 1. And what that allows us to do is figure out our missing variable values. Because remember, this first position in our matrix is like our x position, the second column represents our y positions, and our third column represents those z positions. So this top row is technically telling us that x equals 7. And this middle row, since we've got a 1 in that y position, is telling us that y equals 8. And our last row, since we've got a 1 in that z position, it's telling us that z is equal to 9. So after we get a matrix in row echelon form, we would go through and put it in reduced row echelon form to solve for our variable values. So going back to this example from earlier, we had this system and we turned it into an augmented matrix and we've actually gone through the process to put this in row echelon form. When we did that, we got the matrix. Top row was 1, negative 2, 3, 9. Second row went 0, 1, 3, 5, and last row went 0, 0, 1, 2. So this was our same matrix here, but in row echelon form. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through and get it in reduced row echelon form. So we need to work on getting rid of some of these other entries in our matrix. And the first entry we need to get rid of is this 3 in our middle row. It's going to be just like elimination. We need to turn that 3 into a 0. So we're going to work with that 0, 1, 3, 5 row. We want to get rid of that 3 without changing any of the other values. So I'm going to take our bottom row, 0, 0, 1, 2, and multiply it by negative 3. Then we get 0, 0, negative 3, negative 6. And if we add those things together, we get 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So we're building ourselves another matrix. Our bottom row is going to stay the same. But now we've got a new middle row since we eliminated that 3 in there. Now we've got 0, 1, 0, negative 1. And now we're up to that top row where we need to get rid of the negative 2 and the 3. So we're looking at our 1, negative 2, 3, 9 row. And first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that 3. So I'm going to do exactly what I did right above here where we take this bottom row times negative 3. So then we get 0, 0, negative 3, negative 6. Adding those two rows together, we get 1, negative 2, 0, 3. Now we need to get rid of that 2 in the second column. So I'm going to use our new middle row right here, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. But we're going to multiply by 2 in order to get that negative 2 to cancel out. So we'll go 0, 2, 0, negative 2. Then if we add these ones together, we get the row 1, 0, 0, 1 and we fill that into our top row on our new matrix. And now this would let us solve the system. So top row, we have a 1 in the x position, so that's saying x equals 1. Middle row, we have a 1 in the y position, so y is negative 1. And last row, we have a 1 in the z position, so z is 2. With our last example, we're going to use our calculators to help us solve this one. So let's fire up our calculator. Now, if we look at our calculator on the left-hand side, right above that x with a negative 1 on it, there is an option that says matrix. So I'm going to go second and hit that matrix option. Now, what we need to do first is edit this top matrix. We're going to arrow over to edit and hit enter. We first need to type in what type of matrix this is. So if we look at that system of equations, it's got four rows and there will be five columns. So four by five, hit enter, and it sets up a matrix for us. Now what we're going to do is fill in all of the entries. So going across the top row, there's a zero in the x, there's a one in the y position, a one in the z position, a negative two in the w position, and it's equal to negative three. Now if we fill in that second row, it goes one, two, negative one, zero, and two. Third row should go 2, 4, 1, negative 3, negative 2. And last row goes 1, negative 4, negative 7, negative 1, and it's equal to negative 19. So double check your matrix to make sure it looks like mine.
and then we're going to quit out of here. So second quit. Now I'm actually going to show you two different things. I'm going to show you how to get this matrix in row echelon form, and then also that reduced form so that we can solve it. So first thing I'm going to do is go back to second matrix, and we're going to do some math with our matrix. We're going to arrow over to that math section and arrow down until you find the thing that says REF. REF means row echelon form. So we're going to select that one. And then we need to go second matrix again. And we need our four by five matrix that we entered in for matrix A. So this is saying it's going to take matrix A and put it in row echelon form. So if we hit enter, here is our matrix in row echelon form. But remember, row echelon form doesn't solve a matrix reduced row echelon form solves a matrix. So if we go second matrix, arrow over to math again, and then arrow down. Once we hit RREF, that's reduced row echelon form. So we're going to select that one, and then go second matrix. Again, we're going to pick matrix A since that's where we entered in all of our information. Hit enter, and it gives us a matrix in reduced row echelon form. So this top row, since the one is in the x position, is saying that x equals negative 1. Second row is saying y equals 2. Third row is saying z equals 1. And fourth row is saying z equals 3. So this would be our solution, negative 1, 2, 1, 3. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.